Another video hey flats road um, not flat at all about 14% for a kilometer and here comes Dan um, the better segment is actually called Putlands Road but it seems to be hidden because it goes all the way to the end of the gravel um, but anyway so but this is on a 200k ride and Dan <laughs> Dan's Dan so he's like let's do some efforts and I was like all right all right, right. Um, so here we're we're going along we're doing some decent numbers so I'm 60 gears this is about five to six watts per kilo and I think we held about five and a half watts per kilo for the five minutes then maybe a little bit more um, which is, you know, not, not my best power, but um, it's good power nonetheless. So you can see here's, here's Christian on the left, and this sort of shows you how steep it is, gets up to 13%. I mean, we're literally going double his speed. Like, um, we are flying along. Um, it was it's one of those climbs where I feel like it's really easy to go out. So Dan doesn't have a power meter, and um, often I feel like he doesn't go out too hard because he's a super strong rider. Probably, I don't know, like, if he's strong... Uh, so here we go. Here, I get dropped here, so I'm like, ah, I can't really be bothered. And then... And I'm like, actually, let's have a go. Let's have a go. Let's. Let, he's not too far ahead, but the thing is, he's not too far ahead in distance because it's so steep. But anyway, I was saying, often Dan, I think, goes out a little harder than he could, but he's still so strong that, like, if, if I'm like, oh, I might pace this better by not holding the wheel, I think often it's like, actually, it's just I'm getting dropped because the power's too strong. Um, but I think on, like, on my best day and Dan's best day were probably about similar, but if Dan's, like, having a good day and I'm not, then he'll drop me easily and sort of the other way around like you saw in the other video in Cherryville where Dan wasn't feeling the best and I dropped him um, but it's really good riding with people who can drop you because it really pushes you and it's so much better than just being able to drop everyone the whole time because you sort of get into a bit of complacency so anyway we're going up here like the numbers aren't great here and I was like oh I'm not sure if I'm going to catch him but he's not too far away I was trying to overlay like the um the segment comparison thing but it didn't really work and like it was just quite a lot of effort so I just decided to just show this so he's about five to six seconds. So on that bit where I dropped the wheel, he gained about six to ten seconds. And then after that, he kept on expanding out because I was only really doing a little below 300. So he was he's good doing a lot more. And you have to bear in mind, Dan's like 86 kilos. So he's he's putting on some outrageous amounts of power. Like when he gets his power meter, uh, which hopefully should be soonish, um, it will be really exciting to see the numbers. I think people are going to get triggered by it because they'll be like 500 watts for like five minutes or whatever. Um, but this this climb, I think, is probably one of the steepest climbs. Well, the steepest kilometer I've ever done. I mean, it was like 15% or 14, 15%. And like for a kilometer, like that's way steeper than Henston Road, which is normally people think is like the steepest kilometer in, near Adelaide. So obviously, this is a lot further south than Adelaide. Um, in the Florio, so it's not exactly comparable to Kensington Road in some ways, but this dirt climb does reach up to 20%, and there's no real respite. Like the respites here are still like 12%, while Kensington Road you have like a good 8% or so, where you can sort of chill, not chill out, but like you can just drop the power just for like five, 5 or 6 seconds, and it really allows you to recover. So here you see it's getting up to 18, 19, 20% is just coming up to, and that is... Um, that is pretty steep, and like you can see here, I'm having to weave across the road. My cadence is absolutely shocking because I've only got 36, 28, and we're doing like 380 watts. So we really, like, I need them. Probably a 34, 32, which is what Dan has, um, in order to spin at like 90 cadence or whatever. But even so, we're still doing like 10 k's an hour at 60 cadence, which is yeah, not really enough. So definitely need some easier gears. Like it was, it was one of those climbs where I felt like I was gaining on Dan every time he sort of sat down, but then as soon as he got up. He'd, he'd sort of accelerate away from me and I was losing time. But it was quite interesting looking at the time because we pretty much held each other for most of this climb. He didn't really put that much time into me. It's just when I dropped the wheel and then maybe like the next 30 seconds to a minute where I wasn't really pushing. But here we're getting up. We're going up to decent power. Um, and I wasn't really sure how long this climb was. Like you sort of know roughly, like Dan said, it'll be about five, six minute effort. But it's quite hard to tell because obviously the person, the previous person who did the KOM, it's not a super popular climb, so you don't really know how strong they are. You also, you know, the wind. Like obviously on these climbs, the wind isn't as important. It's like a five percent, like Norton's or something. But it's still pretty important on those steep grains. Like you really feel if it's a headwind because it just like sort of saps your speed, especially when it flattens off because you just don't carry as much momentum. But you can see here it's starting to flatten off, and I'm starting to pick up the speed a bit. The power's feeling. Power's going up a bit. I'm not sure how much more power I could produce if I was doing like 80 or 90 cadence compared to the sort of 60 or 60 cadence here. Um, sometimes I feel on these efforts, like I've mentioned before, that if you sort of have a slightly lower cadence, you can just sort of power through because it's just such a short effort. Um, but you can see here, Dan's actually got a decent lead because the road started to started to flatten out a little bit. And obviously the time is pretty similar, but the distance suddenly increases. And that's one thing on these climbs, often they're like, oh, I could just surge across that gap, but you sort of forget that that gap is actually maybe five or 10 seconds, but it just looks so short because it's such steep gradients. So here I'm having a little rest, like, 
and just trying to think like, all right, let's get Dan now, because I was I was like coming closer to him, but not really, and I was like, I really want to show like this video why pacing, if you pace it properly, and just stick to one number the whole way up, you can sometimes like do better than just trying to hold someone's wheel the whole time. Because I felt like if I held held Dan's wheel another like minute, which I probably could have done, I then would have popped like spectacularly and just like died. Probably would have had to like literally put my foot down at some of those like 20% gradients because it would have just been so steep. But instead I sort of had a mini rest, maybe one or two seconds, then got back into some like alright power, sort of 270, 280, so it's like a good tempo threshold, and then got back up to 350. So this bit here was where I was really like coming down. I was like, right, let's get it. I was sort of bearing down on Dan and there was these like white markers. So I thought like he's we we're about one white marker away and then the, when he gets the next white marker, you can sort of like compare yourself as like am I clo getting closer? And here I'm really like just trying to concentrate on keeping the power around 360, which is like 6 watts per kilo or so, which is pretty pretty nuts to like try and chase to sat down someone who's so heavy at 6 watts per kilo. Like his numbers must are insane. But um you can see here, Dan, I think the KOM for one of them ends just here, but I didn't know that. I thought it would end at a sensible point, which is where it keeps going up. So you can see here, it's still 12%, so I was like, oh, surely this will be the segment. So here I'm getting really excited. I'm like, oh, I'm going to catch down, I'm going to catch down. Like, we're going to get the same time on the segment. And for Putlands Hill, which is sort of the hidden segment, we do get the same time, but the other one, he beat me by like 13 seconds. Um, so you can see here, I'm sort of zooming up to Dan, I'm like, all right, there we go, the segment's done, and I'm cooked now, but Dan was going for the whole segment because there was more gravel now, um, and that continued on for another 10 or so minutes, and I was like, oh, I can't really be bothered, like, this part wasn't really a climb, it was more like sort of rolling hills, so I probably should, could have held his wheel, but I was just like, nah, I am done. Um, but there's sort of like a informative video, like, it can if you pace it properly, you can just suddenly make up a lot of time just at the end, and it's sometimes better, like, you see Tom de Moulin doing it in the Giro, um, like Quintana and Nibali and Pots of Evo, they'll all be attacking and he'll just hold that really steady tempo and it can sometimes be quite nice to do that because you have a target to fix on and you just like you look at it and you can see like oh I'm catching them, I'm catching them and often like they don't have a mirror or anything, they're not going to be looking behind that much so they can't actually see you and then suddenly you're like right behind them and they're like wow it's sort of quite a shock, and it's just like, it's quite a good way, because you have a carrot ahead of you. It's a lot, like, when you're just holding someone's wheel sometimes, and then you just pop, like, it's it's not super efficient uh, way of climbing. It's better just to try and hold, hold like, this consistent watts, especially if it's super steep and people are surging and stuff. It's better just to try and hold the power. Obviously, on faster climbs, like 5% climbs, you've got just got to hold the wheel because of the draft. Uh, but, yeah, cheers for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Hope you